Hi, welcome to Julius Bart, we're gonna mix a red light and we're gonna talk about Grand Marnier. So the red light is a cocktail created by Charles Jolly at the drawing room in Chicago, USA in 2009. And I'm gonna use this cocktail as a test bed for my theory about substituting Grand Marnier for a combination of these three liqueurs. Also, this cocktail features Underberg, which it's a long time I'm waiting to mix a cocktail with this really herbal, spicy, medicinal liqueur from Germany, I think. Is it Germany? Yes. And I'm also gonna test out this the Borgen Dutch Corwin, which, which is kind of close to a uh, Geneva, and I'm just gonna use it in place of the Geneva. So let's get down to mixing this thing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix two versions of this cocktail. One version is gonna have the real Grand Marnier. The other version is gonna have this Grand Marnier substitute, which I made by mixing one part of Amaretto di Sorono, four parts of Hennessy Cognac and six parts of Dry Curaçao. So like Dry Curaçao and Hennessy make up like 10 parts and then you have one more tenth made by Amaretto di Sorono because I, I thought the Grand Marnier, which is a Cognac based orange flavor liqueur, doesn't only taste like oranges, he also has a specific marzipan flavor to it. And I found that this combination of spirits kind of get close by to the flavor of a Grand Marnier. It's not exactly the same. Grand Marnier, it's more rounded. It's better made, specified, aged. This is just a substitute, which I think it might work for in cocktails. So if you don't have Grand Marnier at home, maybe if you have three other things, you can substitute them for the Grand Marnier. So let's get down to mixing. So the cocktail costs for 10 milliliters of Underberg. The packaging of this Underberg is so cute in this shipping packaging paper, brown, so old school. And it comes in 20 milliliters bottle. I tried it once in a bar here in Tokyo, which was a really cute bar, really small. The bartender, really knowledgeable. If I find the name, I'm gonna link it down below, if I remember where I was. I think I was, no, I don't know where I was. <laughs> I thought I was in Ginza, but maybe not. Was it Shimbashi? Someone, I don't know. Anyway, we are gonna need 10 milliliters of this, so half of this tiny cute bottle. Yeah, like this. It's extremely herbal and medicinal, kind of like an unicum, but even a spicer stronger. Then we are gonna need our Grand Marnier, and for the first one, I'm gonna use the real Grand Marnier. I was actually surprised by how good the Grand Marnier tastes. It's good. It's uh, cognac and uh, oranges. So kind of a dry curaçao, but more cognac and some other spices, I would think. Yes, specifically some almond notes. And it just, it's nice, it's a nice combination of sugar, oranges, almonds and cognac. You kind of get the idea why it's so popular all around the world. Anyway, 45 milliliters of Grand Marnier and then 37.5 milliliters of Eau de Geneva. As I said, I'm going to use this De Borgen just for a change. 47.5, a weirdly specific amount, but hey. Let's do it. Let's get some ice and let's give this bad boy a stir. It smells nice though. I smell a mix. It's a mix of uh, Underberg and the cold wheel. By the way, the bottle of this Dutch Corwin is really heavy. You can kind of work out with it. It's made of ceramic. It's really cool and not practical, but it's nice. 
let's strain this with a chilled cocktail glass. And I'm gonna put next to this glass the Grand Marnier bottle, so we know this one is the one made with original Grand Marnier. Let's mix right away the other version. So same recipe, we start with 10 milliliters of Underberg, then we go on with 45 milliliters of our Mock Grand Marnier, made by NC, Pierre Ferrand, Ray Curaçao, and Amaretto di Sorono. And we finish again with the De Borgen 37.5 milliliters. Let's get some ice and let's give this bad boy a stir. So, Red Light is the name of this cocktail, and I don't know if you know, but the Red Light District in Japan is called Pink Light District. <laughs> because Japanese have to use a euphemism even in this regard. I must say voice well, true because red light districts in Japan are not so bad. I mean, the naked women, all that stuff is happening, but the criminality is non-existent. So you can walk in a pink light district and you're gonna see also school kids walking by with no problem. So in a way, yeah, pink, red, I don't know. Let's strain our cocktail in a chill coop. And let's express some orange peel on both of these glasses. And there you go, two red light. One with Grand Marnier, one with the mock-up Grand Marnier. Let's start from the cocktail made with the real Grand Marnier. Cheers. Ooh, this is a nice cocktail. Mm, I like it. It's really nice, well balanced, medium sweetness. The Grand Marnier is sweet. He has some sugar in it, just like uh, dry curacao. This De Borgen, while I think it's less funky than the Boss Geneva, it's more whiskey-like. It matches this uh, cocktail pretty well. And the Wunderberg give a certain spiciness to it all. It just acts like bitter, basically. They're just like really herbal, aromatic bitters. So now let me try the one I made with the mix of other liqueurs to make a mock-up Grand Marnier. Cheers! good this is good too now can we tell the difference between one and the other that's the question maybe there is more difference from the expression of the orange peel and the slightly different dilution than in flavor but let me try again both next to each other and see if i can think of anything that make them different <laughs> they are really similar but getting these big sips of this drink is making me a bit dizzy. Wait, hold on. Let's have water. Now I'm gonna try this one first. I prefer the one with the real Grand Marnier. I think the one with the substitute falls a bit flat, but they are really close though you're gonna be hard pressed to tell them apart. So I guess in a pinch, if you don't have Grand Marnier, but you have these free liqueurs, you can get by in a kind of convincing way. It might be more expensive than buying the real Grand Marnier though. So in the end, I think I'm gonna be forced to also buy a big bottle of Grand Marnier. I was like, maybe I can get by by using something else to substitute for Grand Marnier. But I just think I have to get the real thing in a big bottle. Just my bar is so full, I don't have any more space, so it makes it a bit of a challenge, but I'm gonna fit it. <laughs>
So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, comment down below, share with anybody you like and don't like. Steal yourself this amazing drink with uh, Grand Marnier, Underberg and Geneva and hopefully I will see you next time. Cheers. Have you seen the Squid Game, the challenge? where Squid Game went from being a really entertaining, kind of having like some underlying theme against late stage capitalism to a run of the mill reality show. There was the red light, green light game at the real beginning and more than half the people got kicked out. I was like, well, don't you play that in US? Because yeah, the, it was technically an international group of people participating in this thing, but I would think 90-95% were Americans, and uh, that was really easy, I mean, just run, throw yourself to the gun when it's red light. Maybe you don't have a game in the US. In Italy we have it, it's called Un Due Tre Stella. So you do like, Un Due Tre Stella. So when you say Stella, you're supposed to stop. And uh, of course you can change the timing, but in the case of a reality TV show, it was always the same song. We didn't even speed it up, I think. Kind of incredible. <laughs> and yeah, I just think that it didn't play out as well as the original TV series. It was just, yeah, run of the mill reality TV. They made all the challenges about like, who's your friend, who you like, and really not game anymore. Also, one element which I thought was essential in the original was that if you're smart enough to outsmart the game, you could get away with it. While in this challenge, because I, know, I guess we had to set more realistic rules, every challenge was set with so many restrictions that made cheating kind of impossible. So that was also to detriment of the overall show. But the main thing against the show was that, yeah, they relied too much on interpersonal relationship and not enough on actual skill in games. I think to make it more fun, you have to have a good balance between skill, luck, of course, and maybe relationship building and stuff. Uh, while uh, in the Squid Game the challenge were all skewed toward the relationship thing. In fact, you see like there were groups, women, gay people, men, all separated. It was kind of like not really pretty. But I guess some uh, sociology students can make uh, some nice paper about it, I guess.